Hey guys, it's Nuno Nundur, and today I wanted to talk about a topic that I'm fairly passionate about, and that is the state of modern gaming. Uh, personally, I love gaming. Uh, it's something that has always connected with me ever since I first played my game, way back when. And over the years, right, I've seen gaming go from something I fucking love, and I was excited every single time I, I played it, to now being very jaded, very cautious, and very just done and tired with the state of modern gaming. And I just kind of wanted to talk about my gripes and the problems I have with the way gaming is structured right now. Um, I do understand that this is kind of like um, beating a dead horse at this point, because we have a lot of people who have made amazing videos over the years about the state of gaming, but in any case, I wanted to put my own spin on things and just give my perspective. And before someone says something along the lines of you are looking at things with nostalgic goggles or rose-tinted glasses, I just want to let you know that, that that doesn't really apply to me for a few reasons. Um, ever since I was a kid, like 8 years old to 16 years old, I only had a PlayStation Portable and a PlayStation Vita. I only got a gaming computer when I was like late 17 or 18 years old, I don't, I don't remember exactly, but I only got a gaming computer much later and then I played all of the games I never got a chance to play back then. So I think the argument of nostalgic glasses um, doesn't really apply to me. This is purely facts and how I feel about modern gaming. So now that's out of the way, let's get into the main issues I have with gaming as a whole. I think a good place to start would be the amount of broken unfinished and downright deceptive launches that we have been seeing over the years where developers release a product that is broken, doesn't really work and is clearly bugged, glitchy or lacking in features uh, or a launch where the fucking director or the publishers essentially just lie to the consumers about the things we will see in the game and then launch the fucking product full price. Um, right at the top of my mind, I can think of Fallout 76 or Cyberpunk 2077, and I think these games are incredibly dangerous to the industry for a few reasons. Like, number one, uh, it sends the message to the developers and publishers that it's okay to keep lying to the consumer, that it's okay to keep releasing a broken product that barely works and barely functions, and they charge you full price. And the fact that we have people defending and just it's buying these products means that we are going to see more of these things in the future. Um, in fact, we already are seeing the ramifications of these games. Uh, for example, the newest Battlefield, I forgot the name. Guess what? At the, at, at, at the release, the game was so fucking broken, it barely worked, right? And guess what? They charge you full price for it. Uh, I'm sure there's like more games out there, but I'm... I don't have a script here, this is like merely off the top of my head, so I I'm pretty sure you can think of a number, a number, like a huge number of games that are essentially broken. And this is awful, uh, because more games nowadays uh, are essentially gonna release broken and then get fixed later. Or not, it's a fucking gamble, haha, <laughs> lol. Um, and uh, the only thing I really have to say to the people who buy and support these products is. Blend it all of you. Forsake when did you forsake yourselves? When did you stop respecting yourself as a person, as a customer? And when did you stop respecting your money and your time? Because how, how can anyone look at this and say that you can just not support it? You can just not buy it? You can just not do this, that? Like, no, this is, a, this is unacceptable. Uh, it, it's like going into like a pizzeria and buying a pizza full price, right? You, you, you pay for the whole pizza and then the fucking waiter or waitresses uh, essentially gives you the pizza and you're like, wait a minute, miss or sir, um, why is my pizza empty? There's just bread, like it's just a fucking bread. Uh, and then they're like, oh, sorry, sir, you're gonna have to wait for uh, a few months and weeks for us to um, make the pizza over time. Uh, and, you're gonna have, and you're gonna have to pay extra, and you're like, wait, I have to pay extra for this pizza that I've already paid full price? I'm not gonna stand for this, and then you go to a different pizzeria, and then it's the same thing. And guess what, it's just like gaming. Uh, even if you don't like it, 90% of games out there are made this way. Most of games out there are just released broken and unfinished, so even if you don't like it, your options uh, are very limited.
Um, another thing that I just don't really like about gaming is that am I the, o the only one who feels like a lot of modern games nowadays just feel very samey, very repetitive, very bland and very homogenous. I, I, I don't really know, I'm not smart enough to point my finger in it, at it, but I feel like a lot more games nowadays are way more homogenous than they used to be. I'm not saying that in the past that we didn't really have many samey games. I mean, I, I remember the shooter craze. I remember the um, platformer craze back in the PlayStation 2 days. You know, I remember all of that, and I'm not saying that we didn't have that in the past. But what I am saying is that modern gaming nowadays feels more uninspired, more safe. It feels like the developers are just trying to make the most pandering game possible, just so they can like maximize profits. You know, it feels like every single fucking open world game has the same Ubisoft formula that we've seen a million times already. Uh, it feels like. Video games don't really experiment with new crazy ideas and instead just follow a trend. Uh, like for example, the PUBG phase, I remember like a few years ago when I was still in school, you know, back in the dinosaur age before I was like an old man. Um, I remember that a lot of people were like copying the um, like battle royale craze and it was just driving me fucking insane. Uh, so I, I don't know man, it, it feels like over the years games, games have became way more bland and homogenous because of the money. They're essentially, the developers, are just trying to play it safe, just so can they maximize the profits. And guess what? Uh, making a game that's outside of the norm of what is popular nowadays is a big no-no, because they're not gonna make money, or at least it's not guaranteed for the developers to make money, so they instead just play it safe with safe ideas that we've seen a million times before. And I don't know. Um, obviously not saying that we don't have new and amazing games nowadays, uh, but th I feel like coming from the AAA industry, it's a lot more rare, okay? Like, Elden Ring comes to mind as a game that did something the fucking different, okay? Uh, but this is the exception, not the rule, nowadays, I think. Another issue I have with games nowadays is with the monetization. The way they want even more money, you know? Like, I, I really dislike live services. Every time I hear that word, my fucking brain goes into PTDS, PT, PTSD mode. And uh, I, I just wanna fucking die, dude. You know? Because why is it that you have to pay for full price for a broken and finished product where the developers probably lie to you? And then they're asking for even more money and they don't even deliver. Like, Okay, uh, someone help me try to figure this out, because this just doesn't make sense to me. Why is it that they're essentially charging us for full price, and then charging us for even more money with cosmetics and other live service bullshit, and they don't even deliver the content? How is it, how, what is it? I'm trying to understand here, like, uh, I'm, I'm genuinely trying, because Halo Infinite is full of incompetent developers, uh, the service is live, like, live service, you know, they will essentially add new features and updates to the game, but guess what? They have done a very shitty job at that, so, um, good job, Modern Gaming. So the live service isn't even service anymore, it's just live, I guess. Um, we have the whole issue with loot boxes, which I'm not gonna explain. You know exactly what the problem is with loot boxes. It, it's been talked about for fucking years now. Uh, governments got involved because of how shitty and scummy they were. And uh, loot boxes are now being replaced by an even shittier system, and that is the battle pass. I'm not really sure what the consensus is on the battle pass, but I personally just do not like it. I think it's an awful fucking way of just playing the game. It's, it, j it just sucks the fun and motivation and the drive that I have to play it. You know, it, it just really sucks the motivation out of me, dude, because the way I see it is battle passes are way, way too grindy and they are designed to frustrate you into spending money if you want the real good rewards, right? This is just how I see it, um, because you have to kill this guy 30 times, you have to kill this guy 50 times, you have to suck this guy's dick 25 times, you know, it just, so many boring challenges and boring ways to play if you want that extra XP. You know, it's such a grind, it's just unfun in my opinion. Like, prime example of this would be Overwatch 2 and Halo Infinite. In Halo Infinite, I have to admit, I just had to drop the game. Uh, I just couldn't, because I think the grind, the XP rewards, the challenges, and the parallel pass was just too frustrating and too grindy for me to actually enjoy it. And I just, I just didn't like the system. 
Uh, I think Halo Infinite was the first time I was exposed to Battle Pass, and I just dropped the fucking game right there, dude. I just didn't like it. And Overwatch 2 is another great example of this, because in Overwatch 1, you could actually unlock stuff in a very natural and fun way, right? What I mean by this is, just by playing the game, you could get points to unlock golden guns, you could get uh, emotes, skins, highlight intros, you could get like a lot of cool and interesting things by just playing the game, you know? You could get loot boxes even, and just have a good time. Like, I, I was personally satisfied with the way Overwatch 1 handled its progression. But then Overwatch 2 was like, you know what, how about we do none of that? And instead they just adopted the shitty battle pass that is an like... Sorry. They adopted the uh, shitty battle pass that is in every single modern game nowadays. So that means that if you don't pay money, you're not gonna get good skins, you're not gonna get good emotes, and the progression system that was in the first one is now gone. So your only way of actually getting rewards and cosmetics, uh, you know, the thing that made the first game fun and enjoyable uh, to play in the long run, is now gone. And now you have to grind for god knows how many fucking hours a day just to get basic rewards that, again, were the norm just a few years ago. So, I, I don't think that's fun. Like, again, I like playing games and I spend a lot of time playing them, but if you get to the point where the progression is unnatural, frustrating, grindy, and unfun, then I think we have a problem, and I certainly do have a problem with battle passes. Like, another issue that I have with the uh, gaming industry would be the whole political aspect of it, uh, because it seems like there's this woke agenda being pushed down my throat, you know? Because nowadays we have a lot more representation of women, we have more representation of black people, the LGBT community, you know, like trans and non-binary, which I think it's fine. Like, I don't really have an issue with, you know, gay people or trans or women or black. I, I don't really have an issue with any of that. Like, that's not my point, because I think the fact that we have, um, like, people who are more, like, accepting of different cultures and different races, the fact that we have people who are more accepting of different sexualities and that those people are no longer being persecuted and just, I guess, disrespected for no reason, just because they want to be who they are, is great. Like, that isn't my point, okay? My point is that it just seems like these topics, characters and stories aren't being told in a genuine way because they are, you know, because they actually care about these issues and topics. It feels like these stories and these agendas are being pushed because the developers want to seem either virtuous and, like, good people or because they just want to meet this political, like, agenda that is popular at the time, you know, they just want to please the investors. Because if you go against the norm, guess what, your game is going to have a ton of bad press, your game is going to have this, your game is going to flop, your game, you, you know, your game is going to get attacked because it doesn't have these ideas. So it feels like a lot more games nowadays are essentially pushing for these ideas in a very non-natural way, just because they want to, I guess, meet a certain political criteria, just to make their games more acceptable and more safe for investors. Because, again, if you go against the norm of today's politics, then your game is going to get attacked, okay? Uh, that's just how it is. And, again, it, it feels like it's not being done in a um, genuine way. And, as a result, I feel like games are suffering because of it. The story suffers, the, like, political and historical accuracy of the game suffers. I'm looking at you, Battlefield. Um, you know, it just feels like the games are now suffering, both in terms of the story, characters, plot, and world, because these ideas are being forced into the games when they have no business being, you know. Uh, to me, it feels like these stories aren't being done out of, like, genuine concern, but rather out of, like, a sort of, like, token way, you know, it's like, look, look, we have the black people, we have the woman here, guys, look at us, we are so progressive, we, we are lovely, you know. So I think that's very disingenuous and extremely offensive, you know, if I was, like, a woman, or a black person or gay, if I was like getting represented in this sort of like non-genuine way, I would be very pissed and angry. So I, 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 I don't really like that, you know. I think we, if we want more representation in politics, then um, we should be doing it the right way. And there's a time for everything. There are games that need politics and games that have no business having them. And I feel like having these types of ideas in most modern AAA games nowadays, just to please investors or for whatever fucking agenda they want to push, is fucking lunacy and just makes all of the games worse, in my personal opinion. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm very bad and dumb at explaining my points, but yeah.
when you are essentially forcing developers and you are essentially forcing these ideas and these topics on games that have no business having them then you are no longer making something out of passion and because you love it but you are essentially making something because you have to because you are forced to and as a result the whole experience suffers so sorry for repeating myself but the fact that these topics and ideals are being forced then the whole experience will suffer as i said the story the world the characters everything is going to get worse because at this point it's no longer a passion project but an obligation project if that makes sense and the worst part about all of this is the fact that even after everything that i've talked about there are people who are still going to defend all of these shitty practices because as i said when did people stop respecting themselves as a person, as a customer? When did, when did they stop respecting their time and money and defending this? Because the more we defend this, the more we allow and bend the knee, then the more it will happen, the worse the industry will get. And the, as I said, the worst part is people are defending this. Like, I will never understand, okay? I will never understand because I don't think the, the whole um, argument of just don't play it if you don't like it, uh, that's not fair and it's not... Uh, it's not not a good argument to have okay it's not fair and it just shows that you have no argument or counterpoint to the myriad of facts that i just laid down you know because the worst part about all of this is the fact that we as people we as consumers have essentially killed off gaming the reason why gaming has gotten so bad to this point is because we as consumers have continuously defended, supported and helped these products thrive. I mean, just look at Cyberpunk. Even after everything they did to their consumers, that game is more popular now than ever. And I personally don't think those games deserve a second chance. No Man's Sky doesn't deserve it. Battlefield fucking 2069 doesn't deserve it. Cyberpunk 2077 million bugs. You know, Cyberpunk. <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077 million bucks uh, doesn't deserve a second chance, so I don't know. The worst part about all of this is the fact that you, as a consumer, the fact that we, as a consumer, have failed ourselves and we have made um, the gaming industry worse. And until someone steps up and does something about it, then it's not going to change. And I don't believe it will. I believe that modern gaming is just going to keep getting worse and worse and worse. There's nothing we can do about it because even though I said that we as a consumer uh, did this uh, I have a, a clean record uh, if there's something that I pride myself on is the fact that I don't really support these shitty microtransactions I haven't bought a single uh, fucking battle pass I haven't bought you know I haven't bought a single loot box and even if I don't buy it another 100 people will so there's really nothing we can do about it um, so yeah I guess just enjoy the shit show and in 10 years uh, I'm gonna sit back laughing and just knocking down a fucking cold one watching the shit show that is modern gaming because it's just gonna get worse until it fucking implodes on itself so yeah um, I guess uh, if we truly want to stand up and rise against these types of practices is stop supporting um, these types of games don't keep buying these shitty microtransactions these shitty battle passes uh, keep boycotting the games that deserve it uh, keep playing these free-to-play games and don't give them a, a single dime like I play um, Overwatch 2 I haven't bought a single thing and I will not I have played Rainbow Six Siege and I never bought a single thing from the store uh, just don't buy it just just don't you know just vote with your wallet because that is the only thing that developers will understand okay and make sure to buy um, indie games you know because in these trying times uh, if there's something that has always managed to restore my faith in gaming as a whole and brighten up my day has been indie games games like Terraria for example where I've spent countless hours a uh, game like Enter the Gungeon where it's definitely in my top 3 like this game has so much charm so much replayability and so much fun and just so much love put into it that it's just I don't know, I, I just can't help but smile. It's like a really a really good gem, you know, it's an underrated gem. Uh, games like Cuphead, for example, and a game I've been playing recently called Risk of Rain 2. Like, these games are so fucking amazing, dude. Like, these games deserve way more praise and more money than most AAA games I've played over these years. So, please make sure to support and buy games from the indie scene, because these games truly deserve it. 
Um, but in any case, um, we reached the end of the video. Thank you for sticking with me. I'm pretty sure this this video is going to be a ghost town like usual because my my YouTube channel is pretty dead. But in any case, if you enjoyed it, please give it a like, subscribe, and I'd love to hear your opinion regarding my opinion. And uh, yeah, so uh, have a good one.